Hi everybody, this is James Tompkins and welcome to another Understanding Finance Nugget in which we derive the only single cash flow formula that exists. Now as a prerequisite to this, uh, it would be helpful if you have first seen the nugget two rates commonly used in time value of money equations. So here we are in time value money with single cash flow principles. And what do I mean by single cash flow? Well, basically taking a single cash number, like say $10, and moving it up and down the timeline equation any way you want to. In other words, if you've got $10 at time zero, what is it worth at time two? And as I mentioned, there's only one single cash flow form that exists. I mean, you can look at textbooks and they'll have you memorize you know, an equation for an equivalent annual periodic rate, an equation for this, an equation for that, but they're nothing more than algebraic rearrangements of this formula that we're about to go through right now. So what I want to do is I want to drive it, and what I'm also going to illustrate to you is that I would suggest to you, I'd bet you anything right now. If I bet everybody watching this a dollar, you know, I'd probably make, you know, who knows, five dollars with all five of you watching this. And I would bet you that you already know this formula. You already understand this formula, okay? And so we'll see. So with that in mind, I bet you're feeling pretty confident. I'll give you a pop quiz, right? So here it is. You deposit a hundred dollars with the bank today, and they say, hey, we'll pay you 10% interest in one year. And, and, and I'll even specify, let's say this is a, an effective annual rate. So the amount of interest, well, what is an effective annual rate? The amount of interest made from $1 after one period, so in this case, a year. So you make 10% interest in a year. So 100 bucks today, at 10%, how much do you have in a year? Well, I'm guessing you came up with $110, right? So here was 100 bucks today. I'm calling this a year. The effective annual rate was 10%. And what did this $100 grow into in one year? And you probably said 110. Well, well how, how did you calculate that? What was going on inside your head? Well, I'm guessing that you took the $100, you multiplied it by 10%, which gave you $10, right? So that's $10 in interest. And then you just added it up to get to 110. So the 100 times 10% plus your original 100. Now if I wanted to, could I factor out this 100? I could, right? And what does factoring mean? Basically, I could take the 100 right here, and 100 times this 1 is what we have there. And 100 times this point 1 is what we have right here. So in other words, the $100 times 1.1 came to the 110. And that's what we would call the future value. So here, here's my question for you, okay? When I began with this $100, to move it forward one period, what did I multiply it by? So I began with 100, what did I multiply it by to turn it into 110? Well, it's right here, right? 1.1, right? Now, suppose I wanted to bring the 110 forward or, or the 100 forward another period, or the 110 forward one more period. Okay, so the 100 forward two periods, or the 110 forward one period. So if I begin with 100, I want to bring it forward one period, I multiply it by 1.1. Suppose I wanted to bring it forward another period, what would I multiply it by? Well, presumably 1.1 again, right? So in other words, to move the 100 forward two periods, I'd be multiplying it by 1.1 the first time. 1.1 again, or 1.1 squared. Or if we see what that looks like, 100 times 1.1 gives me 110, times 1.1 again gives me 121. So at this point, if we add in some notation, we've got enough information to figure out the only single cash flow formula that exists. Okay, so, so in this example, my future value that is, that's a relative term. It's a later value relative to an earlier value. And so the present value is the, is the earlier value. Now, 
does the present value have to be today? No, it can be anything you want, right? But it's relative in the context of this formula. So if the 121 is a later value, then the 110 is an earlier value, or the 100 is an earlier value. So it, it depends what you're starting with, okay? If we're starting from 100, this would be the present value, and then this would be the later value. Um, what about the, the R? Now that's the affected periodic rate, right? Now earlier you, we talked about nominal or state or advertised rate. Suppose, suppose it was said that, hey, a bank pays 20% compounded semi-annually. Then these would be, then what's the only first step that you can do with that 20%? By definition, this is in the earlier nugget, divided by 2, right? And now I have 10%. Now, now what, what rate is that? By definition, it's the effective six-month rate. And so does this formula only make sense if you're working with effective rates? You know, it's the amount of interest made from one dollar after whatever the period is? It is, right? So in all these time value of money formulas, you have to be working with an effective rate. So, so if this is a six-month period, if this were a six-month period, you better be working with a what? An effective six-month rate. If this were a two-second period, you better be working with what? An effective two-second rate, which means what? The amount of interest made from one dollar after two seconds. In any case, T, this final one, is the number of periods. So if we're taking this hundred and we're bringing it forward two periods, then this T better be what? It better be two, right? So, so there is the only single cash flow formula that exists and, and what, do you, what can you do with this? Well, basically, you, you can move cash forward and backwards in time. Okay, if you, if you move it back in time, it's called discounting. If you move it forward in time, it's, it's taking the future value of. And I would suggest that there's really only one, if you want to call it, trap in this formula. Can you think what, what it is? Well, what about these two guys? Okay, if, if the periods represent three months, then this R better be an effective what? Better be an effective three-month rate. So in other words, the R and the T, they have to match or, or correspond, if you will. So basically, the reason I keep stressing that this is the only single cash form that exists is that Hopefully this has made sense to you, sense to you and, and this is not something you're going to memorize. You can go through this thought process. And basically, with a little bit of algebra, okay, you should be able to arrange, you, sh you should be able to be given three of these guys and be able to solve for the other one, right? I mean, th this, this is the finance, this formula. And so for, so, for example, if you're given future value, present value, and R, I should be able to figure out what T is. Or if I'm given the T and the R and the PV, I should be able to figure out what the FV is, and so forth. And future nuggets, you know, provide examples of, of this. So basically, you know, the general approach, at least this is what I do, and I've been working with this stuff for a while, and, and even I do this. And that is, before I do any finance whatsoever, can you guess what I do? Well, I want to take a stand on the interpretation of the problem. I want to visualize it. And how do I do it? Well, the first thing, with whatever the problem is, I take all that verbiage and I draw a cash flow timeline diagram. And only then do I solve the problem. And so, as I mentioned, you know, we'll be, or I'll be doing future uh, nuggets or, or nuggets that follow this. We'll, we'll look at examples of basically rearranging these guys, you know, solving for an effective rate and solving for the number of time periods and solving for future and present value. In any case, like I said, this is the only single cash flow formula that exists. I hope you won't memorize other equations that exist in textbooks because you already, you already understand this one. In any case, I hope this was a good learning experience for you and I Look forward to seeing you in future nuggets. Take care. Bye-bye.